So education is freedom. Now that's an idea worth sharing. I'll tell you how it can change your life, and it certainly has changed my life, and how it really can change society and humanity as a whole. It's a big claim. So let me take you on a little bit of journey. I'll take you back to my personal story, where I started. I was that kid who was not going to go to school. Why? Wasn't, I don't think that I wasn't smart enough, but I was told that at times. I certainly didn't have the money. I had no one in my family as a role model, as a mentor. My mother and father didn't graduate from high school. Several of my brothers and sisters dropped out, didn't go to college. You know, it's just one of those environments that is a cycle and it repeats itself over and over. And I was one of those kids. Yet somehow, some way, whether it was the influence of high school teachers, grammar school teachers, influence of the Apollo space program, whatever it was, something told me that I could do it, that I was different, and that I could make it work. So I did. Somehow I got to college. I, you know, I, I went to graduate school, I went to Columbia uh, Business School, and I got to tell you, I went to the interview at Columbia in a powder blue business suit with bell bottoms this wide. <laughs> Clueless. I remember walking across campus thinking, look at all these guys with these dark suits, and you know, boy, they're boring. I, don't, I have no idea how I got in probably because I was a little bit unusual. But they let me in, and I'm going to dial forward now, 20 years later, walking across campus, this time no powder blue suit. I was a graduate now. I was working for a Fortune 500 company. I think I was CFO at the time. I was going back to teach a class, and I was feeling really proud of myself, walking across campus. And what do I see? But I see myself. I see a kid walking toward me, arm full of books, Topsiders, t-shirt, and the t-shirt said, education is freedom. Stop me in my tracks. I said, dude, that's me. I stopped him, I shook his hand, he looked at me like I was from Mars or something, but he had to be nice to me because I had a suit on, so he probably figured I was an interviewer. <laughs> and he thanked me for telling him how important his t-shirt was to me. And I remembered that moment. I remember it like it was yesterday. And three outcomes I'll share with you came from it. One, I went back and a few years later created a foundation called Education is Freedom. It now has changed the lives of literally hundreds of thousands of students over the last 20 years by just getting in there and, and helping them with, with mentoring and with counselors, sharing with them, you can do this, here's how, here's the path. Doing for them what no, I had no one to do for me, tell you how. It's not that hard, it's possible. And the second thing that it did is that moment changed my life because I thought I was done. I'm done. I had college, I had graduate school, I've got a master's degree, I don't need to learn anymore, I'm done. But from that point, I realized my education was just beginning. I just started. I began, became obsessed with learning everything I could learn. I learned how to fly airplanes. today. If I want to go to New York, I jump in an airplane and fly there myself. That's the power of education. I learned to speak Japanese because members of my board of directors were in Japan. And I thought, I'll understand the culture better. And I was able to learn Japanese and it helped me in my career. I picked up a paintbrush. I learned to paint. I played music. I was doing you know, various instruments. So I found that education truly is freedom for me. So what did I do from there? From the, well, and by the way, the third thing I did is I started a book called Education is Freedom with the intention of helping others see that same path. So the title of this book or the catchphrase is Education is Freedom, a self-help guide for humanity. Why is it a self-help guide for humanity? Because think of all of the problems with society today. Anybody got some? Throw one out. There's lots of them out there, right? Little war going on, yes. Uh, some discrimination, some racial injustice, some crime, murders. We had a mass shooting. What are the what is it the absolute root cause of all of those societal problems? The root cause. Think about it. Fear. Somebody is afraid. Whether it's a government that's afraid that they're going to be 
taken over or taken advantage of, or if it's an individual or if it's somebody afraid of immigration because they may take their job. Fear is the ultimate culprit that causes so much ignorance in the world. And ultimately, the antidote to ignorance, the antidote to fear is what? Knowledge, education, learning, right? So my hope for society is that we can overcome the issues of society by dramatically improving society's level of knowledge, of learning, of education. Why am I so optimistic? I believe, like John Lennon believed, that the world can live in harmony. Remember the song Imagine? I believe that, and the reason I believe it is we're on the cusp right now of an absolute revolution Another Beatles song, revolution in education. Think about what happened during COVID. During COVID, all of a sudden, everyone had to go to virtual learning. What that did, that process, we ended up dramatically countrywide accelerating access to Wi-Fi, dramatically accelerating access to laptops, to portable devices. We accelerated the availability of educational technology by as much as 20 years in the last two. That is a huge, huge breakthrough. Now, those of you, especially some in the audience I can see who had to live through that online learning wasn't a great experience, right? Why? Because it was patchwork quilt, it was last minute, we threw it together, you know, and it just didn't work very well. But think about what's possible. Don't think about what is. Think about what's possible. Imagine an academic environment where the content of your classroom even in the classroom, is as engaging and interesting as any video game that's out there, or better. All of this is possible. Imagine a world where you can get incentivized for doing your homework. You get points, you get, you get prizes for completing a test, just like you do on your video games. You can level up. So if you're in high school algebra, why not level up all the way through first year or second year college? You can do this online, you can do this with technology. It's absolutely possible, but you have to take charge of your own destiny and use that technology in a way before the rest of the market comes. And it's coming, and it's coming fast. There are developers right now working on eye-popping graphics, working on really compelling content. What we have now is things like Khan Academy. I love what Khan Academy did. It's great for learning math, but it's deadly dull if you've been out there. There's no reason for that. I was talking yesterday with a baseball player, Mavericks, uh, a member of the Rangers, who wants to be able to incorporate video like Khan Academy to show how baseball statistics actually work and, and teach math by using something like baseball statistics in video format. These are ways that can capture the imagination and change the way we learn. So because of that, because of technology, because of this coming revolution in education, because of the ability of technology to tailor learning to ways we learn, because we all learn in different ways. Why did we have to, to, to do what we've done for the last 200, maybe 2,000 years with books and with, and with teachers and you know, lectures and tests and a bell curve? Because we had to. It was basically the, all we had, so we had to make it conform. And that conformity worked for some, worked for me, I did well in the system, doesn't work for others. With technology, we can conform the learning to the ability of the individual to learn. And that flexibility is gonna be huge. It will change everything. So what we hope is that the self-help guide for humanity, education is freedom, use of technology, making Wi-Fi accessible to the most remote parts of the planet will lift everyone and increase their level of knowledge and understanding and decrease fear and ignorance across the world. Now, all that sounds great, but where's the start? What well, starts with you and me taking individual responsibility for our own lifelong learning. Because it's one thing for the technology, the tools to be out there. If we don't spread the word, if we don't understand how to use those tools and use them most effectively, then it's never going to work and society won't change. So my gift to you that I want to share is the gift that I have. 
And I didn't realize this was a gift. It took me many years to discover it. So I'm going to give you a jump start, and I'll share it with you. Here's what it comes down to. There are three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, right? You've heard of maybe there's uh, something I've seen called the five C's of education, which is uh, things like uh, community, it's like curiosity, things like that. Uh, all of those things are good, but there are three missing C's from that equation that propelled me in my education and my level of freedom. Those three C's are, number one, change, acceptance of change. How many of you, in the face of adversity, in the face of change, put your head down, became the victim? We all do it. It's natural. There are times in our life when we think, well, woe is me, why me? That's just not fair. But it's not change. It's your response to change, especially in the face of adversity, that matters. That's what makes the difference between a winner and a loser. The person who, facing adversity, facing change, gives up, quits, puts his head down, or the person who powers on and says, you know, this is hard, it's difficult, I don't like it, it doesn't feel good, but there's something learning in here, there's some learning in here that will make me better on the other side. That power to control your own destiny by controlling the way you respond to change is a life-changing attribute. It's such a powerful tool in your toolkit. So number one, responding to change. Number two, what's it take to respond to change, especially adversity, things that are bad? Confidence. You have to have confidence. For some reason, as a little kid, I don't know why, some reason, I like to attribute it to, you know, I started on a paint by numbers and I got outside the lines and it was really terrible. It was kind of a bad looking painting. My mom must have said, my son's an impressionist. <laughs> because to this day, I believe I can do anything. I believe I can paint. And I've discovered that there's no such thing is good or bad art. You ever been to Momo in New York, Museum of Modern Art? There's some really weird stuff in there. They call art. And you look at that stuff and you go, wait, I could do that. Art is expression and we all can do it. Many of us had it beat out of us as a kid because we painted on the walls or put crayons on the, on the wall as a kid and we were told, no, bad boy, bad girl. Any of us have artistic capabilities. We just have to have the confidence to let it, get, let it go. Same thing with any element of learning. Learn a foreign language. Have the confidence. It will expand your life. The ability to go to Spain and actually converse with locals and speak the language. It's an entirely life-changing experience, and it's all about freedom. And the third, so if you can deal with change and embrace it, if you have the confidence to power on, then the third is clarity. As Einstein once said, the hardest thing in the world is to make simple, simple um, explanations out of complex problems. But that's the key to success, and it's the key to learning. Because how often did you look at a, at a, at a problem and say, or a, a, or a course and say, I just don't get it, I can't understand it. Well, you can if you break it down into components, into simple parts. Remember algebra, remember formulas, you had to put parentheses around them and solve for each little piece of the formula first. Well, life is like that. Life can be very complicated. And if we let that complexity overwhelm us, it causes us to stop learning. It prevents us from learning. If we break everything into simple terms, and if I have a gift, that's one of them that I've been able to do because I've got a simple mind. <laughs> For me to understand a complex business solution or problem, I have to break it down into terms that I can understand. And that's helped me tremendously. So those three things, embracing change, having confidence, and having clarity or simplicity in your life are three things that will make education as freedom for you come alive. Now, if you all will do this, and if you'll share this formula with other friends, then you can help me. Together, we can change humanity in a better way. We can replace fear with confidence. We can replace ignorance with knowledge. We can replace hate with love. 
I don't know about you, but I choose love. Education is freedom, is the path to get there. And with your help, we can make this world a better place. Thank you.